Hi guys, this is Pestilli and welcome to another Escape from Tarkov video. In this video, I'm covering Raiding 101, uh, giving you guys a basic plan on how to survive a raid if you're at level 1 all the way up to whatever level you want, but uh, it's more targeted for people that are new to Tarkov and they don't really have any direction on how to survive a raid and what kind of loadout they should take. And this is more of just a way of giving you a little bit of an, uh, an idea for how to um, put a bit of a loadout on and go in with a plan to get out and just make a little bit of rubles and get a little bit of XP and slowly build it, that knowledge base and skill level so you can survive raids longer and, and have uh, more in-depth plans going into them. So guys, without further ado, let's crack straight into it. So first up, I want to look at the loadouts. Now what I've done here, I've got the Kappa container, so I've represented it in alpha container, so you've got the four squares. This is the kind of loadout that I would suggest that um, if you're if you're new to Tarkov and you just want to try and mess about and just start learning some stuff, uh, I'll give you some really good tips here on how to uh, get a really basic loadout together that will be able to kill geared players, but also um, you know it's it's actually a decent bit of kit that you can upgrade as you're inside the raid. So first up, um, the weapon of choice I'm going to tell you guys to use is the SKS. The reason behind this is the SKS is about twenty four thousand rubles. And you don't need any magazines to reload it. So um, if you double tap the SKS, you'll have this here. You can take that out. That's the magazine inside it. You can put the ammunition in like that. You can put one in the chamber so you don't even have to do that when you get into the raid. And now you have an SKS with 10 rounds in it, or 11 technically, ready to go. Now when you're in the raid, if you press R, as long as you have loose ammunition in your pocket, you'll reload that SKS. So you don't have to take in a rig. If we took no rig, we'd still have uh, the ability to reload that SKS. So you can actually save money on the rig there if you didn't want to take that in. Um, but you do have the option there. Uh, as for this rig, it's only 10,000 rubles. And it, you can upgrade it really easily and you can insure it and get it back in insurance and vendor it to Ragman anyway. So in my, in my opinion, if you're going in uh, with a really basic loadout just to make some rubles and get some XP, this is not a bad plan. As for the pockets, I wouldn't take anything else in the pockets. And uh, I've put the sling there mostly because if you're on a standard account, you do need to have a little bit of space to, uh, to loot. And uh, that's the option there. But the whole plan is when you get into a raid, you're looking for a scav to kill to upgrade your space on you. So you get armors, rigs, backpacks, etc. Lastly, inside the pouch, we have our meds. Now, the reason why we have the meds in the pouch is you're going to use them over multiple raids if possible. But um, the entirety value of all the meds inside the container is 9,500 rubles. So the, the, the general rule of thumb when I do looting is I want each square of loot that I take could be a value of at least 10,000 rubles. So if you find one item worth 10,000 rubles, you take that one item out, you put it inside uh, your container, and I'm talking to vendor, by the way. Uh, you put that in your container, you've already paid for all the rest of your meds, and so you're already in front with the med sides of things. And this entire loadout here is worth about 40,000 rubles, about 42,000 for the rig, backpack, ammo, and the SKS. So if you could fill up all four of these squares um, with at least 10,000 rubles per square of value, um, you're only down the value of your, your, your meds, but your aim is to get more than that and also to survive the raids. So right now I'm going to cover the seven maps, what I think you should be doing over those seven maps and if you should, uh, where, where you should go and what you should do. So first, first three maps I'm going to talk about is the ones that you don't even waste your time on when you're, uh, you're trying to survive raids, all right? So the objective here is to teach you to survive raids. So factory, don't bother, all right? Uh, use your scav runs to go on factory to try and get some loot and get out. Or uh, if you're going into factory and you're new to the game, you're going to get smashed. I, I swear it's a really brutal place and when you're new someone like me will just walk all over you and uh there's a lot of players that even in like and we've been playing for maybe 100 hours that will also walk all over you they've just got better gear they've got better knowledge they know the map i, I would suggest going into factory in offline mode against scavs uh against the bots to just practice learning the map and getting better at killing on that map so then when you do finally go in there you can actually build up that skill set uh customs and labs now customs only go there when you want to do your quest Initially, it's just not worth it. There's too many, uh, too much congestion in the map. There's a lot of choke points, and it's very easy to hunt down people on that map. You make a, a single gunshot, and there's probably two to three people that are in there trying to kill people, uh, and they'll be running straight towards you. So avoid customs initially, unless you're doing your questing. And then labs, you're just going to lose money. All right. So when you're new, save the labs key cards. If you can sell them on the flea market, sell them on the flea market, and you'll be in front there financially. Now, uh, Reserve is one of the best money ma making maps in the game because of how close uh, all the extracts are and all the spawns are to uh, the loot. So you can literally spawn in within 30 seconds, be looting something of decent value, and then you can extract very soon after. Um, 
I think reserve's great if you're new to the game and you want to make some money. Learn the no backpack extract. Um, I'll have maps popping up here in a little video so you can actually see what, what I'm talking about. But um, you can watch my Get Rich Run loot guide for, for reserves and my in-depth loot guide for reserve to get more information on where all the loot is. But uh, reserve is a easy map to make a lot of money and take that no backpack extract. The bigger rig you have, the better. Um, and you can take advantage of that. You'll make a lot of money very quickly on reserve. Now, Shoreline, um, it has the hidden, uh, so the rock passage extract where sometimes it's lit up and you can take that extract. Doesn't make it a lot easier to get out of that map or if you have the pier that pops up from time to time. Um, my suggestion with Shoreline is just avoid uh, all the major conflicts areas being the resort and that center line, uh, which is the power station, gas station, and the bus depot. And just go through the hidden stashes and, and, and around the edges of the map make a lot of money in the village and the hidden stashes to uh make profit and then extract that way now with interchange this one has a no backpack extract as well as it has um the two major extracts it used to be really campy for the extracts but you can kind of avoid that now um it, it should hopefully be a little bit better um i am going to show an example of doing an interchange run going along the outside on an online server uh just to show you how i would do it and how do I would gear up and make some money from it too. Lastly, Woods. Now, the uh, the new Woods map is amazing for loot, and you can make a lot of profit on there, and it's a lot harder for people to be able to, like, kill you because there's so many trees you can run between and, and run away from. So, um, it's really, like, you, if you get caught out, you probably will die, but um, particularly that car extract with the 3,000 rubles is golden, and what I would highly suggest is you probably put the bandage inside on, on, on onto your pockets and then just take 3,000 rubles cash uh, along with you. And the way to do that would be just hold control, pop three. I think it's 3,001, um, believe it or not. You need 3,001 rubles to take the bridge extract and then put that in there. And then now you can take the bridge extract on wood. And I'm going to show you that one as well, um, just how I would probably tackle on doing that. Two last things I want to cover before I actually dive into uh, showing you some raids is um, the Packer Armor. This is available from Ragman Level 1. Uh, and it's cost... A 29,000 rules. Now, this is your best defense against scavs, but useless against players. So, um, personally, I would take this because I know I'm going to get it back from insurance. But if you really are struggling for cash, I'd probably consider against it. But uh, you do need to spend 750,000 rubles on Ragman to get him level two. So, it might not be the worst idea to start using them early on. No one's going to loot them. So, if they're insured, you will get them back and they do repair pretty well. So, it's up to you. But I'm trying to show you a way to, to cut down your cost on going into a raid at level one. Lastly, your scav runs. So um, right now I've got a scav with an SA-58, a press armor. It's got a tea bag backpack, a scav vest, and a uh, lower half mask with some sunnies. This loadout here is probably worth about 100,000 rubles. Now I have two options on how I would personally uh, use this. I'd either go factory, try and kill one scav or just run straight towards the extract and I can use some of that stuff. Or I would go into um, interchange and I would either just loot some scavs or loot some gear on the way out and do it that way. Personally, um, interchange is a lot safer. Uh, generally, when you scav into an interchange run, you spawn into the map um, when there's only like 15 to 20 minutes left. So most of the players are already dead or all fucked off. And you've got the opportunity to just grab some loot and get out. Don't mess about in the middle of the map on interchange, particularly on your scav. There's always going to be those other player scavs in there trying to get the loot from dead killers and stuff like that. Dead players around there. It's just smarter and easier to just go into that extra uh, the outside areas behind uh, all the idea and, and uh, goshen and just looting all the um, tech spawns there to make money grab your scav uh, runs get out and then you can use the items that you get from that on your pmc to uh enhance your uh, your progression with that this this game really does open up once you hit level 10. um it's around about fifty thousand rubles uh, sorry fifty thousand xp uh, you get level 10 and then you'll be able to use the flea market once you use the flea market you can buy a lot of items on the flea market and you can uh you can sell all the stuff that you that you find in raid so for some of you guys this will probably be as far as you want to watch but um i do want to just do two quick runs they're going to be like less than 10 minute runs or bang, bang on 10 minutes so we don't get a run through but i should try and kill a scav on the way through uh, i'm going to do a woods run and i'm going to do a uh, interchange run and i'm going to show you exactly what i'm talking about here how to make some rubles i'm going to leave my capa container looking exactly like this um, but how to make some rubles and gear up a little bit and just slowly tick up that um survival rate so actually teaching you how to survive raids uh we're going to be avoiding fights just trying to make some money kill some scavs get some extra gear and get out i will be using the packer um and it's up to you if you want to or not but like i said you will most likely get it back from insurance but it does add an extra thirty thousand rubles to your loadout making this entire loadout loadout about 
70,000 rubles, plus another 10 for the meds. So 80,000 rubles for this entire loadout. So let's jump into a woods raid. All right, so spawned in, come up here, and uh, the convoy was down there. We're going to go up towards the USEC stash, which is up on top of this hill over here. Now, the objective is to purely just another player here. I'm not trying to fight every player, but we can get an easy kill here. That was a clean hit on his back, so he'll be hurting there. Alright, so we've got him. This is a USEC stash. This is actually a pretty contested area. We don't normally have to go somewhere like here. But this isn't a way for us to uh, gear up. You could have just avoided this, this guy. We could have left him behind, but now we see this rig. We're going to take this rig and we're going to get out of here. And we're going to we'll quickly just loot anything we can here and then get away from here. So, um, old T got HP ammo. It's not really good ammo. Are these Amelia's or something for a little bit? Now you, you're actually, when you're doing this below level 10, you're looking for items that are of value above 10,000 rubles per square. Um, initially, you could just grab everything until you actually know, but these aren't worth much. These, they're not worth much at all. Dog tag, that's actually worth a bit, so we'll put that dog tag down there. We'll grab every single one of them. Uh, if we can change this over, that's an MBSS backpack here. We want to switch over to that backpack. Double tap Z to get rid of the uh, your previous backpack, and bam. Well, there's a trooper rig here. <laughs> Holy moly. This is where Woods is amazing right now. All right, so now we've got better armor. We've got a bigger backpack and a bigger rig. Looks like we're going to get a gun here too. Uh, middle mouse wheel to, to fold that. We'll take that there. All right, and now we're going to head around to the uh, um, northern side of the map. Past the convoy. And we're going to just... Uh, Pretty much we're just going to avoid any of the conflict zones like that was uh, and just stay away from people and just try and get some loot. I'm pretty sure there's a hidden stash over here by this rock. So um, by the time you guys watch this one, I will have my woods and interchange guide out. Maybe woods interchange and customs guide out for all the hidden stashes and uh, you should learn them. Like, honestly, for making money, they're absolutely gold. This guy's got a Valde side on it. So, okay, if you really wanted to right now, you'd put that Valde into your container. Uh, and that's a... It's like a 45 to 50,000 ruble site. And um, you could put that in your container and then, uh, you know, you've already made solid money back just there. Moser man here. So right now we've been heading up north. I think he's in the bunker. To be honest, I don't really care too much about this Moser man. We're not going to gain a lot from that. So we're just going to run past that. Keep heading down this way. Now, like I was saying, um, the hidden stashes will make you so much money. Alright, so. In this little spot in here, there's another hidden stash. And memory, it's in the middle somewhere. There he is. Oops, I mean that. My mouse hit my keyboard. 
Oh, fuck, he shot at me. Alright, so he's dead. One less person to worry about. This map is going to become more and more popular, so... This is where, with your insurance, you can actually toss that, take that, you'll get the SKS back from insurance, and now you use the Mosin instead. So, a little bit of insurance fraud, you'll get a free gun back. I would probably toss it into a bush normally, but no one's going to pick up an SKS like that. And we're just going to run along the road here. Uh, this is the sunken village up ahead. There was a hidden stash up there, but it's all good. And we've already made a fair bit of money here. Um, we don't need to go too nuts. But we, you know, we do want to capitalize, so. Now, with both of those fights, you could have just ran away. Um, I've got my confidence up so I can actually take on fights like that. But you could literally just run away and um, there would be nothing wrong with that. And we're pushing across here. There is plenty of things you can loot in this area. Um, the mark circle is just here as well. Gold chain, so that's 30k. Something like the gold chain there. Um, we take out that with the gold chain in here. Um, and that's probably 30k rubles. So, you know, we'll pay for most of the uh, our, our loadout with just that there. Um, you can search all these houses and stuff. There's uh, the the co uh, the ch uh, church in the swamp. You can get inside that too and get some some money over there. But I'm just trying to show you a really basic way of just cruising through the map. Once you've got to this much space, I would just be grabbing pretty much everything until you're full. And we're just going to be heading around the edge of the map. BTM is a good good type of ammo. So we'll get rid of that. Particularly early on, if you can get something like uh, BTM on that, you'll be grinning for it. There's no requirement to do all uh, all your tasks straight away. You could literally just practice doing this stuff just to get good at the game and, and, and get your skill sets up. But it is a very punishing game. And, um, yeah, you want to make the most of it. So, right now, I'm, I'm hit, I don't know what you call it. I'm going to call it Rock Gap. Uh, and you can see the bridge there. There's an actual extract on that bridge. It costs 3,001 rubles for, uh, for the car. There's also a hidden stash up here. I'm just trying to remember exact location. Between the rocks on this side, I think. Just there. These hidden stashes are amazing. Please just learn that. They're amazing. Take advantage of them. And I'll have links to all the uh, hidden stashes down below. Um, the guides for them. I head down this way. Now, if you needed to make more money... This whole village to our front is filled with loot, like absolute chock a block. But right, I'm trying to teach you guys the basics of just trying to make a bit of a bit of money. What you can do is also double tap double O when you first get into raid. I apologize, I was going to do that to learn all your extracts. So ZB01 four and outskirts is actually pretty much the opposite side of the map to where we are now. But we're going to the bridge extract because I wanted to show you the power of this extract. Because until like at the moment, I don't really. If you're going to do quick raids, it's just going to be the way you're doing it. Plenty of loot on this side of the map. You run straight at the back here. Most people will still be too busy doing all their quests and all that stuff. 3,000 rubles. You hide behind here and you'll extract in a minute. Don't go past that line because uh, you, the sniper scabs that you can't see will just kill you. So we're going to wait 50 seconds. We're going to extract the raid. And you can see right there, we went in with 
Okay, uh, 70,000 ruble loadout. We're going to get the SKS back from insurance. We're going to get the uh, the packer back from insurance, The both the backpack and the rig. So it's all money, all gear we're going to get back. Is on top of that, we've got all this gear to, uh, to you know, to enjoy. So, um, I don't know how much. If I was selling it to the flea market, there's probably three to 400,000 rubles worth of loot here. Maybe maybe a little bit less, like 250, uh, depending on how much the bulbs and, and, and all that is selling for at the moment. That Valde is worth 50k. Um, the screws and nuts are actually being worth a fair bit at the moment. Gold chain's 30k. Trooper armor, brand new, 90,000 rubles right there. Um, yeah, so. And bam, we're out. That's the entire raid. We're not, we weren't trying to do anything crazy. We're not trying to take on half the raid. We're not trying to kill all the scavs. Um, if I hadn't have killed any players or scavs, <clears throat> I would have waited till the 10 minute mark to take the car. Just because you need to be in at least 10 minutes to not get the, uh, to not get the, uh, to not get a run through unless you get enough XP. And usually killing one scav with a headshot plus getting a little bit of loot will be enough. Um, but it, that was 13 minutes in the raid. Um, I had to, had to disconnect as soon as I got in the raid because of, uh, I was uploading some YouTube content. Um, so <laughs> I had to pause that and rejoin the raid. So I apologize for that. But yeah, 3000 XP. If you were level one, um, 3000 XP would put you up to about level three and you would have made a heap of money there. Didn't do anything crazy. Um, there was some pretty low geared players there to kill. Um, and we took advantage of that. But like I said, instantly could have just turned around and gone a different direction. Or kid waited till they had looted and then gone through and scavenged after him. There's no requirement that you have to like get the premium loot every time and, and all that stuff. So uh, hopefully the editors put the uh, the pathing of the raid up on the map for you so you guys could actually see the exact same path that I took. Um, and it was just a very simple plan. I didn't go into trying to do a lot just to get that stuff. All right, one more raid. We'll go into interchange and we'll do the exact same thing. I was going to dump all this stuff and grab a new loadout for that. All right, now for the interchange run. I've gone this slightly. It'll, it'll be coming into daylight um, just as we spawn in. Now, the whole purpose of me uh, doing this way is I wanted to... Um, preferably, I would do this at night time. Now, obviously, it's it's not night time, but I still want to make it so you guys could see it. So this is a quick transition from, day to, uh, from night to day. So you will still be able to see everything, but there should be hopefully a little bit of quieter raid. Now, uh, all we're going to do is going to go around the edge, do the hidden stashes. There's probably about 10 to 15 that we'll get around on the edge around here. There aren't any spawns um, between me and this back wall, but there is a spawn over onto the left over there. Um, the whole purpose, like I said, we're just going to try and get some loot, nothing, do nothing too crazy, and then just get out of here. I probably will miss a hidden stash or two. I'm doing it all by memory. Um, you could easily just put up a map on a second monitor. And um, be able to get an extra bit of loot that way. So these runs shouldn't take any more than, say, 10 minutes. 10 to 15 minutes. This one's just located behind here. So that pressure gauge is worth uh, 40,000 to vendor. So when you go interchange, you can also go to... Um, you could also go to uh, take 3,000 rubles in to take the car extractor at the power station. It's not there all the time, but if you do want to go around that way, you can do that. And very quickly, you'll see how you can just make some decent money. Screw nuts at the moment are actually selling really well to uh, on the flea market. But you need to be level 10 to be able to make that kind of profit. <clears throat> now you will run into a little bit of uh, contact like with players and scavs doing these kind of runs. Um, but it's, it's just to get you in the rhythm of just learning the game. So I do need that for a quest. Um, and just slowly getting used to movement, finding stuff, making money. And as you get a little bit more money up, up your, uh, in, your, in your bankroll... We got to take advantage of uh, putting on better better loadouts and, and going that way. So uh, it's <clears throat> I haven't done this run like in a long time. There will be other people trying to do the same run, most likely. So you do need, do need to be careful. This one's pretty common. This kind of run, just running around the edge of the map, not going into the mall itself where all the all the crazy geared p people will be. And uh, just, just getting some hidden stashes. 
You can tap X as you uh, press the F button and you'll uh, go prone as well. This is the kind of stuff we want to see. This should be hopefully a good armor. Um, that Vaseline will replace our painkillers with. Oh, there's a gazelle. See? Money. And that gazelle <clears throat> on the flea market is actually probably worth a lot right now because it's needed for a quest. If we get a damage to it not very high as well, it's going to be even worth more because of the fact that uh, there's a quest that re requires you to hand in a damaged gazelle. But... See how we go. Now, there could be scabs along this bit here. And we're just going to go around on this side. I'm going to jump over here. And I'm going to jump over here. Stay in this low ground and we're going to keep going around the edge here. One thing I would recommend is don't let your stamina go below half. Because if you get shot at, you need to be able to run to cover. For the first two or three minutes, it's pretty crazy inside uh, interchange uh, on the outside, and then they all start heading inside. Because sometimes we'll, the main people you're running to on the outside, like here, will be people doing the exact same as what I'm doing right now. Or one of the quests that require you to go to the outside. I know I've missed one of the hidden stashes. Did I just hear something? There's a helmet for us. I love the fact that they put armor and rigs into these uh, hidden stashes. It's actually made them, like like I said, really good for just looting around like what I'm showing you right now. And um, it kind of touches on how the whole dynamic spawn table um, might look in the future. Which, if it does go down that path, oh, I'm going to be so excited. I'd love the idea of walking into a random room that uh, usually might not have anything in it. And now, all of a sudden, it's got, you know, the gazelle armor. This one's been looted. Which means that they've probably looted the ones along the back here too. The cool thing about this is we might be able to come up behind them. Have to wait and see. So it's 4 minutes and 15 minutes till we can ex extract. Almost to 15 seconds, so we don't need to rush to the extract just yet. And what I would I suggest is you don't have to do this exact run, but what, what I'm suggesting is you just try a little different new paths to try and build up that, like, comf being more comfortable in the raid. Because, like, it can be very daunting going into a raid when you're, uh, when you're just first new to Tarkov. And I'm, I'm trying to show you an example of, all right, this one hasn't been searched. Of how you could just do a basic raid, survive, and make some money whilst doing it, and hopefully gear up as well. Looks like another gun. Okay, that skull, that's worth 45k, so we're going to take that too. Um, what I might get rid of is the cash, and I'll take th that there. Got to my left. Damn it. That was unfortunate. Um, <clears throat> uh, but what we would have done then is just kept going around that path on the way to the extract. That guy was probably doing the hidden stashes as well. So, um, look, can't win them all. It's just kind of unlucky. But there's a perfect example of uh, the kind of pathing I would do, and I just get head towards the extract. We were probably about two minutes from running to the extract. I um, just got a little bit unlucky. But uh, in saying that, uh, if I go to... Um, oh, he got me with one bullet. PS round of the head. He got very lucky. He must have got the face hitbox because there's no way that PS round would have gone through that helmet or that armor. Um, but yeah, um, I'll show you, even though we died, we still made profit. And it's kind of what, what, what I want to try and teach you this. So, um, the Vaseline is going to be good. We're going to hold on to that now. And the Vaseline we can use in future raids. And then, um, it's actually a good thing that I died. And we've got the, uh, the, the pressure gauge here. So I go pressure gauge 
And skull, that's like 69,000 rubles there. Bam. So we made profit and also got the Vaseline on top. And we're slowly going to get better at the game. When you do survive one of those, you actually make a lot more money and it, and it works really well. So, um, yeah, pretty straightforward what I'm trying to teach here, but it's just more about the basics of trying to build up a uh, skill set to be able to survive raids more often, make a bit of money. And not you don't have to go straight through the middle of the map and try and make a killing. That interchange run is very common, by the way. So you will see people doing that one a lot, but use use the woods, uh, the other maps. Um, you, you could definitely make good money and you don't have to go through the main uh, high areas. It's actually quite amazing how many people do that, that interchange hidden stash run when uh, on shoreline there's 26, 36 different stashes. Woods has 26, which you'll uh, see in the guide that I'm about to post. Customs has a heap, which I wouldn't suggest going customs. But um, yeah, I don't know why interchange is the popular one, but that's a very common run. And uh, I got very unlucky not being able to kill him then because he did not have good gear on at all. Anyway, as for this video, that is it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Um, I'm just trying to teach you some basics here. It's a very basic uh, guide of uh, Tarkov 101 of how to survive and go through a raid and uh, my basic loadout for that. So if you enjoyed this video, please smash the like button for YouTube algorithm. It really does go a long way in discoverability. And I'm trying to try and do a good range of guides from like beginner guides all the way up to more advanced. Um, so if you do want to keep learning stuff, go check out my new player playlist, watch my raid series and um, subscribe and notification bell so you can see all the videos as they're coming out. Um, a lot of time and effort goes into making these and hopefully you guys enjoy them. Um, besides that, guys, I do stream on Twitch every day of the week. It's going to link below. Give me a follow there. You're going to talk off questions. You can always hit me up on my live stream. And lastly, guys, we'll see you next time.